Hi everyone, uh, welcome to yet another episode of Nakshebazi. This being the 18th one, a major milestone, right? Now we uh, mature, ho gaye hai. we have uh, you know, reached 18. Uh, so this is pretty interesting, a milestone. Now we can vote, can drink, daru pee sakte hai, isn't it? Sadly, <laughs> no. So but, but as, we, as, we, as we move on, Today, I intend to uh, start a very new phase of our history. This is where uh, Babur enters the scene and the foundation of uh, the Mughal Empire is uh, built. I would like to focus today on uh, the context in which Babur is actually coming to India. The context in which Babur reaches India, I want to highlight that through certain very interesting maps of world and Central Asia. I want to give you an insight into that context. You remember we have looked at uh, this map once, right? This is how India looked like on the eve of Babur's invasion. Babur was somewhere around here. He was holding Kabul, this region. And uh, these were the Indian powers. So I want to highlight the causes in which Babur is coming to the subcontinent. Right? So let's, uh, without much delay, let's start talking. Babur had one of the most illustrious visiting card uh, anybody could have imagined in the times of medieval history. He had genes of two of the uh, most fearsome and uh, famous conquerors of medieval times. From his mother's side, he was associated to the family of uh, Mughals, uh, sorry, the Changes, uh, Changes Khan family, Mongols, and from the side of his father, he was associated to the family of Timur, the Turkish conqueror. So these Mughals, they are basically Turco-Mongols, and they come to India, right? So. Uh, I'm sure we have spoken again once or twice. I have spoken about Changes Khan. This is this is uh, Changes Khan, and this is how he just went berserk and established his huge Mongol Empire, which was partitioned into various Khanates. Similarly. You should also be, he had a lot of sons, Changes had a lot of sons and once he died, as per the Turkic Mongolian tradition, he partitioned his empire. He had son like Joki, Jochi, he was his eldest son. So a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, empire went to his uh, control. Similar divisions occurred. Now this is Changes. This right here is the next fellow that you should be aware of. This is Timur, the lame. In Hindi, we know him better as uh, Timur, Lang. He was a cripple. He had lost his uh, one leg, as you can see, even in this painting. Right? And he establishes a massive empire. He establishes a massive empire. Have a look. He starts from area around Samarkand and see how he moves. See how he is moving, even invading Delhi in 1398, capturing a lot of region around Punjab. Timurid successors ruled it for quite some time. Right? So this is Timur's empire. Timur's empire, he established it between 1370 to 1405. And in 1405, Timur dies. Now this is, a, you know, again, a huge empire. As you can see, this, this, 
you know, purple or mauve color that you notice here. Samarkand and Herat, they became the two most important cities. They became the two most important cities of uh, the Timurid Empire. Dark green and the light green as you see. Light green were primarily, uh, you know, dependencies. Vassals. This is the time period of Timurid Empire. Timur, uh, as you can see, the region of Iran and the region of Turan, the Turkish area, it was known as Turan. All that was brought under one roof. But then he died. And he also followed the same Turkic uh, tradition of partitioning the empire. He partitioned the empire. But he had a very, very capable son known as Shah Rukh Mirza. He once again fought and united back the territories. And ruled for next 40 years very confidently keeping the area intact. This is the same fellow whose ambassador Abdul Razak goes to Calicut and then is called for the Vijayanagar Emperor Dev Rai too. Right? He went to meet the Abdul Razak was sent to meet the Zomoran of Calicut on some trade related issues. And uh, uh, once uh, Vijayanagar Emperor got to know of it, he said, you know what? Send him to me. And the uh, ruler of Calicut did it precisely so. And then Abdul Razak has given us very beautiful details about Vijayanagar and its splendor. Right? Abdul Razak, ke bare mein. This is a Dev Rai too. After Shah Rukh Mirza, Shah Rukh Mirza dies in 47. And this is where the decline of Timurids began. This is where the decline of the Timurids is obvious for one and all partition hota hai. Right? Partition hota hai and uh, uh, various small principalities which are being ruled by different Timurid prince. They come into power. Right? They come into power. In this power vacuum, because the Timurids have dissipated. In this dissipation, we hear of two powers emerging. Two powers. One of them will be very important for us. In fact, both of them, but one is very important. One power which emerges in the north is another Turco-Mongol tribe called as Uzbek. They belong to region of, uh, uh, you know, somewhere around south of Ural. And in fact, the, uh, the name of the Ural mountains is derived from Uzbeks. Or probably it's the other way around. From Ural, the word Uzbek has been derived. Right? And uh, so, these are uh, the Uzbek chaps. They rise very strong in your uh, Kazakhstan region, just above Uzbekistan. I'll show you a map, don't worry. Uh, just listen to me first, right? So they are ruling this Kazakhstan steppe region. They belong to that area. And in this context, in 1460s, as Timurids are dissipating, uh, this dynasty of Uzbeks called as a Shaibanid dynasty, Shaibanids, Shaibanid Uzbeks, they become very powerful and they start capturing all these uh, small principalities of Timurid princes, Samarkand, Herat, Farghana, they capture it all. While in the West, while in the West, from area in Iran, 
we hear of the Safavid dynasty. The Shia Safavid dynasty, Kurdish in origin. And their name is coming from, again, a very interesting uh, fact. Their name is coming from, uh, you know, Safavid, Sufi order, Safaya, Sufi, you know, Sufi order. Safavid order type Sufism. And they believed in it. And hence the name. The Safavids, they were Shias. Very powerful. Contemporaries of Mughals. Okay. So now do you realize Timurids are in a very, very desperate situation. That will help us. One more point that you need to keep in mind here is a lot of sectarian strife which is going on in the Islamic world. Shia Sunni sectarian strife is very very strong component if you want to understand this time period. Right? And uh, the Safavids are Shias. Right? The Safavids are Shias. Uzbeks are Sunnis. Ottomans are Sunnis. Ottomans are ruling your uh, Levant region, Israel, Palestine, that region. And of course, modern day Turkey and all. Right? And the Mughals. The Ottoman Turks are Sunni. Mughals are also primarily Sunni. They are also Sunni Muslims. But uh, remember, this court was not full of sectarian strife as much as let's say a this or a this. Uzbeks and Safavids were a lot more involved into this sectarian strife. Or let me put it this way. They used sectarian strife a lot more for political reasons. Uske naam pe ladke paana kya cha rahe the political goals, right? Religion is always a tool which is used for political agenda. At least this is how I have perceived it to be. This is uh, the world map. This is the world map uh, of around, uh, you know, 1500, 1500 or so. Uh, if you notice, this is a Timurids, right? And uh, this is a Shaibani. This is Shaibani, just you know from Aral Sea region. This is the Lodi Sultan. Okay. The Safavid Empire. This is the Safavid Empire. Do you notice Kandahar? Southern Afghanistan. This was a major problem, conflict region between Mughals and uh, uh, Safavids. This was one point of uh, bone of contention. This region, this is Khanet of Bukhara. The Shaibunids, which I'm talking about, the Uzbeks, they established it. I'll come back to this uh, map probably in a, in, a, in a while. This is the modern day map of Central Asia. This is Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan. Right, try and understand these uh, countries and their maps a bit. Also notice the cities, these are famous cities of Central Asia. Now they are currently in uh, Uzbekistan. This is uh, Bukhara. Alright, this is uh, Samarkand. Both of them are in uh, Uzbekistan. Notice Tashkent, right? Tashkent, it is in Kazakhstan. These are, these are some very famous cities. Bukhara, Samarkand, Tashkent, right? These are some very important cities. This is map of Uzbekistan. Notice Farghana. Notice Farghana. This is Samarkand. Why am I showing you these maps? I'm showing you these maps because this is the battleground of what will happen. Babur, 
was a Timurid. Now, now let's understand the story. Babur was a Timurid prince. Like so many others who were ruling the region. In 1494, a 12-year-old kid, Babur, ascended the throne of uh, Fargana here in modern-day Uzbekistan, Fargana Valley. Samarkand was the most prestigious town of Timurids. Timur, he had taken, you know, thousands of Indian artisans and used them to beautify the capital. Right, and Samarkand had become a huge cultural center. And uh, as Timurid power was declining, all these Timurid prince, they all wanted a piece of Samarkand. They all went for Samarkand. Babur did too. He tried snatching Samarkand. Got defeated by Muhammad Shaibani, the founder of the Shaibani dynasty. He gets defeated by him. Loses Farghana. Loses Farghana as well. He is reduced to a prince without a kingdom. You get my point? He uh, loses Farghana as well. This is Muhammad Shaibani. Right? He is the one who gave, uh, they claim the Shaibanis, right? They are Uzbeks, Turko Mongol Uzbeks. They claim uh, 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 lineage from Jochi, the eldest son of Chinggis, right? Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, it may sound as very, you know, uh, strange probably. For me, it personally is, right? Mongolian history, Chinese history, I find them very, very different from our history. Right? And uh, they had those tribal traditions which are uh, very fascinating and tough to wrap your head around. Uh, so anyway, this Muhammad Shaibani guy, right? he, he claims his uh, descent from Jochi, the eldest son of Changes. And these Shaibanids, they start capturing one by one all the important cities of Timurid princes. Right? Shaibani established a huge, became a huge power. They, they, they laid the foundation of Khanate of Bukhara. Khanate of Bukhara, you know, he established Kari, Muhammad Shaibani and the Shaibani dynasty. Right. Moving on. Uh, he rules only for 10 years. How so? Hota kuch aisa hai. Babar now is in a very very tough spot and he has nowhere to go on one hand are the very strong Safavids and on the north corner the Shabanids Babur is forced to go east and south oh, sorry south and east and he reaches Kabul he conquers Kabul in 1504 in 1504, he conquers Kabul. Meanwhile, the Safavids and uh, the Shaban, you know, uh, Shaibanids, they are fighting over Khorasan. Khorasan is your eastern Iran and western Afghanistan, Herat and all. So they are fighting over that. And in 1510, the Safavid ruler, the Safavid ruler, I think his name is, uh, uh, this is Babur's kingdom of Kabul. Shah Ismail, Shah Ismail, he defeats and kills the, uh, you know, founder of Shabanid dynasty. Muhammad Shabanid is uh, killed and as a result, now, the Shia Safavids and Sunni Mughals, they are into a partnership. 
because Uzbeks and Ottomans are extremely, you know, they, they want, uh, they are somewhere religiously antagonistic towards a Safavid. Because Safavids are Shia. Mughals, they are coming from Turko Mongol thought. They do not give a lot about that. Although Uzbeks are also coming from Turko Mongol thought. But they were using sectarian strife for political purpose. Mughals were not. Maybe because the reason is because, you know, they were ruling India, which is such a diverse land. And as a result, Safavids and Mughals, they became natural allies. Uzbeks several times proposed that the three Sunni power, Ottoman, Uzbek and uh, Mughal, we should all club our energy and destroy these heretics. Mughal said, no, we do not want to disturb the balance of power. So that was a very interesting situation in those days. I hope I have been able to give you a glimpse into it. I hope, right? Uh, so Shabinat Zara, you know, Shabinat Khan is dead. And using Safar with the help, Babar makes an attempt for Samarkand succeeds but the Shaibanids they regroup they get a new leader and they once again kick out Babar and now he's absolutely dusted now he's absolutely dusted and he decides to take claim he decides to put his claim on all those vassals, all those rulers who have once upon a time claimed loyalty to Timur. Timur had defeated a lot of people in Punjab region. So Babar said, I have a natural claim to those regions. I am from Timur's family. So give it to me. And he started raiding and conquering nearby Punjab region. And by 1525, he had managed a small little kingdom just on the edge of the subcontinent. From where he will enter and we will have the first battle of uh, Panipat. See, this is, this is his region. This is the map he, he was having. He was controlling Lahore and Kandahar. As you can see, he has Uzbeks here. Uzbeks, who will later become Khanet of Bukhara, and he has Safavid here. Jai to Jai Kaha. So much good, na? So he had nowhere else to go, and he decided to uh, enter India. Right, and that changed the course of history once more, and we started, we, we got into the glorious Mughal period. Babar, you know, this is one last point which I would like you to probably uh, appreciate. Uh, Safavids, on their western border, they were defeated by Ottomans. The Sunnis. So Safavids also wanted to cultivate good relation with Mughals. You getting my point here? Because on their west, they had a very aggressive neighbor. On their north, they had a very aggressive neighbor. So they wanted to have good terms here. This is why once Mayu, right, he will be defeated by Sher Shah Suri. He will escape to Persia. Right. Uh, this, this is, these are two paintings here which I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, this one is of a battle between uh, Ottoman Turks and Safavid. The Safavids were badly defeated here in 1514. This is Battle of Chaldiran. Why am I showing you this image? I'm showing you this image because of this. 
notice this these are artillery pieces being carried on carts barricaded by carts as well this was a strategy which was used by the Turks against Safavids in 1514. Come 1526, look at this. This is precisely the technique which Babur used against uh, uh, Ibrahim Lodi and destroyed the Lodi's. Lodi's did not know what had hit them. They had never seen such quick maneuverability of artillery. They thought this will be a Turko-Mongol kind of a, you know, cavalry-dominated attack. And, you know, they were just not prepared for it. They suffered heavily. Right? And a new chapter began in our history. God bless you. See you in the next round. Take care, have fun.